Mental health professionals across the state warn of dire social repercussions as a result of another round of cuts to the State Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Those who care for the sick say that the cuts threaten to create a ripple effect that will increase incarceration, homicide, suicide, and dropout rates. The number of Oklahomans with mental or substance abuse illnesses is expected to balloon in the coming months and years because those in need won't be able to access services. That belief is shared among mental health professionals like Janet Chesick, who is the CEO for the Center for Therapeutic Interventions, which serves some 5,000 clients. I really don't know. I don't know how much worse it, it can get. We have people who walk through our doors every day in crisis. Most of the time, we do see them for free because it's the right thing to do. But as a business, I, I can't continue to see people for free. Last week, the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services announced an additional budget cut of 13 million, bringing the total loss to the department to nearly $23 million in the last three months. The department estimates more than 73,000 low-income Oklahomans with mental illnesses and substance abuse disorders will lose some, if not all, access to the state-funded services they depend on. When somebody who may be homicidal or suicidal who can't get into treatment for 12 weeks, it's, it, it impacts all of us. Chizik says the cuts will also affect insured patients because the sickest must be treated first. You kind of you know, get on this priority list of, oh, you have some mild depression, you're, you may have to wait four or five months to get in to see a provider. Creoke's Behavioral Health serves some 5,000 people in 300 communities in Northeast Oklahoma. The nonprofit Human Services Agency serves Medicaid consumers, the uninsured, working poor, and all children, regardless of their circumstances. Phil Black is the senior regional director for Creoke's and says cutting back services may have devastating consequences. Kids that are potentially homicidal, suicidal, uh, horrible things could happen because they can't, they, they don't have access to services. Black believes without proper treatment, students won't be able to attend school, which will only increase dropout rates. We have therapists in, in the schools that see kids uh, that with severe problems two, three times a week. We can't do that now. Once a week is going to be the max. At a Tulsa Regional Chamber meeting this week, mental illness was the focus as community leaders discussed ways to reduce incarceration rates. We saw last week the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services got cut again, but Department of Corrections is getting more funding because we're moving, we're, everything's being on the back end and we've really got to start on the front end. Mike Bros is the executive director of the Mental Health Association Oklahoma and says lawmakers should understand that by cutting mental health and substance abuse services, they are only creating bigger economic problems. Again, where are you going to address it, you know, at the highest cost, worst outcome, which is incarceration of nonviolent offenders? Or you're going to move upstream and you're going to allocate and continue to fund these treatment programs that keep people, help people be stable, help people be connected, help people continue to be taxpayers. And I wish our elected officials would do something. This isn't about oil prices. This is about a long-term problem of budgetary issues in Oklahoma. Chizik points out that even before the drop in oil prices, the legislature has failed people who need therapeutic help and says less money for treatment means a sicker society. It would be the same if somebody had cancer and we said, oh, you need five units of chemotherapy over a week and us just saying, we're going to give you an hour. It's, it, it just gets to be where it isn't enough and you're kind of beating your head up against the wall of, we know this isn't enough, we're going to give you something, but it, it's, it's not enough. It's just not enough. Bro says Oklahoma needs to change its philosophy. Are we just going to continue to use punitive uh, justice versus restorative justice? And, you know, these are, these are big philosophical ideas I'm talking about, but those translate right down to the street. 
Mike Baker, who is the chief officer and director of EMS for the Tulsa Fire Department, says when treatment isn't available, first responders will have to do more than they already are. When these folks' social service system fails, they call 911 and they get a fire truck, an ambulance, and a police officer. To illustrate the cost of those services, Baker talked about the 70 calls from a Tulsa couple dealing with mental health issues since April of last year. 17 responses in one month, okay? Estimated cost of impact to the Tulsa Fire Department $15,000 for that apparatus to respond to their house. Now, I am all about taking care of the public and I will do anything that you need me to do to do that, but there becomes a point where we can no longer uh, manage these super users without a team approach. With even deeper cuts in the next fiscal year starting July 1, mental health professionals are worried about the effects of untreated mental illness for years to come.